Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I will explain the movie Tai Chi Hero, released in 2012 as a sequel to the film Tai Chi Zero. The mid Qing Dynasty is still a very unfortunate time for China, as the Western powers have invaded. China's suffering has called for a progressive party, the self strengthening movement to save the country, which was created with Prince Dun as its leader. Prince Dun was entrusted with the safety of China by Emperor Sisi. He built roads and factories and modernized China's military. But still, the task of saving China proved very difficult. Prince Dun leaps into action after learning that Beitang has been invaded by the British, with 20,000 British soldiers marching towards Peking. And one of his generals had committed suicide after failing to stop the army from breaking their defenses. China's military also had problems with their firearms, crippling their defenses. Prince Dun is furious and frustrated with the bad luck of his army in these desperate times, when suddenly, a British airplane flies over his palace, which is not equipped for an aerial attack. Prince Dun is now out of options, as he does not know what to do anymore. Meanwhile, in Chen village, Lu Chan and Yu Niang are set to marry each other so he can earn the family name and learn the Chen style of Kung Fu. Their wedding is interrupted by Yu Niang's older brother, Jai Yang, who is welcomed by everyone except Master Chen. Jai Yang is celebrated in style and arrives with his beautiful wife, who happens to be a deaf mute, whom he communicates with via sign language. That night, Yun Yang observes Lu Chen eating leaves and learns that his abilities force him to eat a lot because his energy is drained by the power he wields. He has a big appetite which she thinks makes his eating habits silly. Yun Yang is concerned, but Master Chen stops her and says that Lu Chen has to master internal kung fu to prevent his powers from draining his life. He wishes Lu Chen will become an unrivaled kung fu master but can only attain such a title if he learns the Chen style Kung Fu. But Lu Chen can only master this style if Yu Niang's yin is aligned with his yang. Yu Niang refuses, insisting that she does not love him. Meanwhile, Jai Yang is confused why his sister is marrying a fool like Lu Chan and becomes furious when he learns his father intends to teach an outsider like Lu Chen the Chen style Kung Fu. He reminds his father of the Bronze Bell prophecy of the 10th Grandmaster. Later, Yun Yang begs Master Chen to forgive her brother and accept him back into the village, but he refuses. Soon after, Yun Yang lays out rules regarding her marriage to Lu Chan. He is not to share the same bed with her and will address her as his master without question. Lu Chen is uncomfortable with the rules and tries to sweet talk her, but she quickly scolds him. As a couple, isn't he allowed to call his legally wedded wife Darling? They begin practicing immediately, as Jai Yang and his wife secretly watch them, seemingly hiding something. Meanwhile, Yu Ji, Jai's younger brother, is curious about the Bronze Bell prophecy his brother spoke of earlier and interrupts Jai Yang and his wife to learn more. Jai Yang narrates the story of the prophecy when a hundred years ago, the ninth grandmaster Chen Wang Ting created the family's kung fu style, the Chen style kung fu. But it was the tenth grandmaster Chen So Li who made it popular across the whole of China by defeating many challengers with the style. This kung fu style made the Chen family very powerful, with so many people wanting to learn the Chen style kung fu but it was always reserved only for their family. The 10th Grandmaster was very kind, and his generosity was unrivaled. One day, a mad monk visited him with a large bag on his back. This monk pretended to be poor, and the Grandmaster cared for him with food and kindness. The monk stayed for many days, and many of the Grandmaster's disciples wanted him to be on his way. Still, the Grandmaster insisted that he was welcome to stay for as long as he wanted. One day, as he watched the 10th Grandmaster teach the disciples Chen-style Kung Fu, he was caught spying and attacked by the disciples, but he easily defeated all of them. The 10th Grandmaster was furious at the monk for harming his disciples and spying on them, and seeks to learn why the monk had come. The monk pulled out a man from the large bag he carried 
and told the grandmaster he had caught one of his finest disciples stealing and raping women in a nearby village using Chen-style kung fu. The monk had come to punish the grandmaster for his disciples' recklessness, but he changed his mind after discovering that the people of Chen village were kind and honest. So he showed gratitude for the grandmaster's kindness but warned him against teaching the Chen style Kung Fu to anyone who does not bear the Chen family name. He dismantled the bronze bell in Chen Su's temple and it crashed outside the temple walls. Before the monk left, he cursed the village that if outsiders learned the Chen style Kung Fu, disaster would befall the town, and if the bell tolled at night, the entire clan would be obliterated. And that is when the Grand Master laid out the rule that no outsider could ever be taught the Chen style. Jiang Yang warns his brother that an impending disaster will befall the village if an outsider is taught the Chen style. Yu Ji believes the Grand Master's rule has been broken and Lu Chen will bring disaster to the clan if he is taught the Chen style. The next morning, Lu Chen goes into the village in search of food but the villagers close their shops as he approaches, believing he will bring disaster to their town. Lu Chen is confused as to why everyone is suddenly hostile towards him, unaware that Jia Yang and Yu Ji have been plotting against him. Jia Yang then arrives and pretends to help Lu Chen by offering him food. Jia Yang learns Lu Chen fought in the Divine Truth Cult before tricking Lu Chen into following him to show him some Chen style moves. But then, Lu Chen is ambushed by Yu Ji. But this attack activates Lu Chen's powers and he goes into a frenzy, attacking Yu Ji and his men. Meanwhile, Jia Yang's wife learns of the bronze bell and reaches for it amidst the chaos. Lu Chen has become unstoppable, so Chen-style disciples are sent to apprehend him. Lu Chen attacks the villagers, but as Yu Niang approaches, he blacks out. Later, when Fang walks into an abandoned factory belonging to Jia Yang, he is mistaken for him and apprehended by Chinese soldiers because Jia Yang owes the bank a lot of money. Suddenly, Duke Fleming of the East India Company arrives and orders Fang be released immediately. Fang learns that his execution was ordered by Prince Dun, but the Duke had stepped in to save his life and demanded payment for the mess his iron monster machine caused. Meanwhile, Jia Yang tries to talk to Yu Niang out of her marriage with Lu Chen, believing they must banish him from the village. She insists on staying married to him, especially since Lu Chen saved her life. Still, Jai says her marriage is not a good show of gratitude, telling her she must love him if they are to be a married couple. Lu Chen fully recovers and continues his training with Yu Niang. Lu Chen seems to have improved his Chen style, but she leaves in anger. So Lu Chen then visits Master Chen, who tells him the Chen style is a way of life based on Tai Chi. In London, Fang mourns Claire and believes he should avenge her by punishing the people of Chen Village. Fleming thinks he can't win against the people of Chen Village, but Fang tells him this time he will show no mercy and asks for his help. The next day, the bronze bell in the temple falls and everyone in the village panics, believing the bronze bell prophecy has come to pass and Lu Chen has brought disaster upon the village. However, Master Chen suspects foul play and catches Jia Yang's wife at the top of the temple, discovering she is responsible for the bell. Meanwhile, Jia Yang stops the bell from spinning, making the villagers feel safe again and they expel Lu Chen from their village. Master Chen confronts Jia Yang's wife, but she doesn't answer him. Yu Niang does not believe in the prophecy and suspects someone is manipulating the villagers against Lu Chen. When Yu Niang's grand uncle makes Jia Yang head of the family, Yu Niang objects. Master Chen arrives and reveals that Jia Yang's return to the village is only to cause trouble, showing that he has been in contact with Fang. He then orders Lu Chen to fight Jia Yang to prove he is unfit to lead the family. After Lu Chen easily wins the duel, they discover Jia Yang is wearing an exoskeleton under his dress, allowing him to fight Kung Fu like a master. Everyone is shocked by the unexpected revelation and Lu Chen realizes Jia Yang was the one responsible for his frenzy earlier. 
In a flashback, we see a young Jai Yang trying to impress his father with his kung fu skills, but Master Chen does not seem impressed even though a young Yun Yang is amazed at her brother's skill. Jai then loses control of himself, and when his father steps in to help him, he discovers Jai Yang is wearing a device underneath his clothes to help with his kung fu. Master Chen is disappointed, as Jai Yang has repeated the same act in the present, and he now believes Jai Yang is hopeless. In tears, Jai Yang confesses that he doesn't even like kung fu and prefers making machines. He reveals that kung fu is not enough to stop the Westerner's machines, but he has run into debt because of the machines he built and the government has shut down his factory. He also confesses that Fung promised to help him clear his debts as long as he returned to the village and became the new Grandmaster. The only way he could become the new Grandmaster was to spread the superstition of the Bronze Bell prophecy around the village. The villagers are also disappointed in him, but Yu Niang feels compassion for him. As Jai Yang leaves the village, Yu Niang and Lu Chan chase after him. When she hands him their family inheritance and tells him to sell it to clear his debts, he apologizes to both of them for being a terrible person. Meanwhile, Fang takes over as deputy governor of Hainan on the orders of Governor Ji Li. The impeached governor, Yan Hao, is charged with corruption and sentenced to imprisonment, but still he insists on appealing to the governor, where Fang reveals that the East India Company helped him secure the position. That night, Lu Chan is worried about Jai Yang and has trouble sleeping, and Yu Niang joins him. Elsewhere, Jai Yang discovers his factory is still sealed and believes that he has been betrayed by Fang. Despite being warned against entering the factory by his wife, Jai Yang breaks in and is ambushed while his wife is held at knife point. When Jai Yang and his wife are brought before Fang, they are surprised to see he is now deputy governor. Upon learning that Jai failed to keep his promise, Fang orders his officers to torture his wife. But Jai pleads with Fang, telling him that he tried his best, but his father discovered their plans and Lu Chen's kung fu was too powerful. Unmoved, Fang insists that this is payback against Jai for the horrible childhood memories he created for him. Out of fear, Jai reveals that Lu Chen was a member of the Divine Truth Cult, which gives Fang a new master plan to bring down the Chen village. He will charge the village with harboring a criminal since the Divine Truth Cult was a rebel group. Jai is afraid for Chen Village and begs Fang not to make a move on the innocent villagers. However, Fang is hell-bent on destroying the town for killing the woman he loved, Claire. Back at the village, during a training session with Master Chen, Lu Chen discovers why Yu Niang is unhappy with him. He destroys the remaining parts of the iron monster machine Fang intended to use to force the villagers into agreeing to his railroad project. Lu Chen believes that destroying the machine would make Yu Niang happy, and his plan works. For the first time, Yu Niang asks him to come home to dinner, and Lu Chen is happy. Meanwhile, the governor of Ji Li tests a new weapon he has developed for the Chinese army in an open field. This cannon is believed to be many times better than previous models, and Fang uses this opportunity to ask the governor to send a battalion to the Chen village and destroy it with the cannon. The governor refuses, claiming that although Fang bought his way into his position, he has no power to command a battalion. But after Fang bribes the governor, he agrees to his plan. Jai Yang has a nightmare that evil will befall his village and decides to build another robotic glider called Heaven's Wings and asks his wife to sell the family inheritance Yu Niang gave him earlier. That night, Yu Niang invites Lu Chen to join her on the bed and tells him not to address her as master anymore, but to call her darling instead, breaking her own rules. Later that night, Master Chen watches Yu Niang and Lu Chen dancing on the roof, noticing that she seems to have started to fall in love with Lu Chen. The following day, Yu Niang teaches Lu Chen Chen-style Kung Fu and he becomes better at it, while Master Chen is impressed with the new development between the married couple. Meanwhile, Fang and his army march to Chen village and he orders his army to test the cannons on the town. 
The villagers panic and run for their lives as the siege begins. Master Chen calls Liu Chen for instructions on how to win the conflict against Fang and his troops. Surprisingly, Liu Chen suggests they have a good breakfast and then surrender. Master Chen does not object and orders Yu Niang to prepare breakfast. Fang orders his troops to keep firing the cannon at the village while Master Chen, Liu Chen, and Yu Niang have breakfast. Fang calls the villagers to hand over the trio or his troops will demolish the village with all of them inside. Master Chen then asks Liu Chen and Yu Niang to escape from the village while he stay behind and surrender himself to save the villagers, but Yu Niang objects. Master Chen insists and instructs them to find Master Li Qiang Kun in Peking, hoping things will turn around. The trio set out and pretend to surrender themselves. A fierce battle ensues as the trio takes on the battalion before them. The army is once again no match for the Chen-style Kung Fu and they easily take out Fang's men. Fang becomes furious and engages Master Chen on his own, but Master Chen easily wins the confrontation. Suddenly, Jai Yang swoops in on his new power glider and drops bombs on Fang's men. Master Chen marvels at Jai's invention before ordering Lu Chen and Yun Yang to Peking to report Fang as he surrenders. Jai Yang drops a bomb that disfigures Fang's face and he barely survives. Jai then offers to give the couple a lift on his glider, but they soon run out of fuel. Jai jumps off the glider to reduce the weight, allowing Lu Chen and Yun Yang to arrive at Peking safely, while Jai lands with a parachute and surrenders. Meanwhile, Prince Dun receives news that some divine cult members are in the city, but he assures his men they are safe. Elsewhere, Lu Chen and Yun Yang have arrived in Peking. Fleming learns of Fang's disfigurement and orders his transfer to an institution, while Lu Chen and Yun Yang find a horse and race toward the palace. Master Chen and Jai Yang are imprisoned together in the same cell, where Jai apologizes for being a failure. But Master Chen apologizes to his son instead and accepts him since he has proved himself. And in a flashback, we see a young Jai Yang banished from the village by Master Chen. Meanwhile, Lu Chen has to battle his way to see Master Li, and he does so easily, having finally mastered Chen-style Kung Fu. Master Li still refuses to see Lu Chen and Yun Yang, refusing to have anything to do with them, but they insist. They have to prove themselves before Prince Dun. Lu Chen once again easily wins the duel against Master Li. The prince frees Jai Yang and Master Chen after hearing of Fang's attack on Chen Village. Lu Chen is now a Chen-style master and has earned Yun Yang's love. They all return to Chen Village, where they are welcomed by the surviving villagers. Elsewhere, Fang is taken captive by Fleming, who has been fired from the East India Company. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, drop us a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care!